Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to this new session and our first lecture on fundamentals of data structure. So in this course we shall be covering a lot of stuff beginning with data structure overview and then we have a little revision of primitive data types. We we'll talk about array, some data structures, uh, list data structure. We we'll look at a lot of concepts uh, regarding some of these data structure like array, list, uh, dictionary, uh, stack, IQ, and so on and so forth. So without wasting much time, uh, let's look at the agenda for the first lecture. So for this first lecture, we shall look at an overview of what data structure is. We'll look into the, prim the primitive data types, we'll have a revision on that, and then we'll also look into one of these data structure, array, we'll have some class activity as usual, and then some exercise to take on to practice. So data structure is simply a way of organizing and storing data in a computer program or algorithm so data structure allows for efficient access and retrieval and manipulation of information in essence data structure is simply a building block of organizing our data when writing a computer program so that we can easily access this data we can easily manipulate this data we have a lot of uh, different kind of data structure. We have array, uh, array list, map, and so on. We will look into them in subsequent uh, lectures. So just an example of how data structure actually uh, help us in organizing our data and make manipulation easy for us. So let's say uh, I want to have a... Uh, total course code of courses that I, I enrolled for in this semester or session. Let's say a student wants to have the total course code of courses that he enrolled for in this session. So uh, one way to do that, you can declare a course, you can declare a variable for each courses that you enrolled for. Let's say the first course, second course, third course, fourth course, and fifth course. Let's say there are five courses. So you declare a variable and then you specify the course code for that. And let's say you want to assess any of these course codes, you simply uh, make use of the variable where you store that course code, right? So if you are to make use of a data structure like array, we can simply do that with a one line of code. We simply specify a variable with a uh, this square bracket specifying that this is an array variable and not just any ordinary variable so and then within a curly bracket we specify all the course code it all the course code in order for us to assess any of this course code we simply reference to the variable the array variable and use the index of whichever course code we want to assess so we'll be talking more of what index is and array in the subsequent slides so primitive data type i believe we all know what data types are so uh this is just a kind of a revision right so primitive data type are simply the fundamental data type for which all other data type or structures are implemented in a simple in a simple form we can say they are simply what <coughs> a data format data format to what to uh, specify or that represent a value that we want to store in a variable so whenever i want to have a, a, a value store in a variable we need to specify what kind of data or value we are storing that variable and we make use of this primitive data types right although it did depend on the programming language for that. So the basic primitive data type, which are uh, built in in every programming language, are we have the n n numbers and uh, we have the characters and we have the logic. So as far as number is concerned, we have uh, long, we have integer, we have double, we have float and then for character, and then we have boolean for logic. So each of these data type has uh, 
the size and the description of what they can see. For example, long, it's, it have eight byte size and it can store one number from this. This is actually a great figure. Uh, it's a very large figure from this to this. So whenever you declare a variable as long, just know that that variable is capable of storing eight bytes of information. And then we have uh, integer, which is capable of storing four bytes of information. And this information has to be a whole number from what? Minus, is it, is this two million, or uh, is it actually is a large figure actually, from this range to this range, and so on and so forth for other data types. So speaking of array, it's actually a data structure that we use to store set of data item or element of the same data type. So it can store primitive data type or objects. So what we mean by that is array is simply a kind of data structure that we can use to store a collection of data of the same data type. So whenever I want to have, whenever I want to store some information in an array, let's say we want to store a student name. So in that array variable, it can only store student name or another word, it can only store a string of student name. So what I mean by data, data item of the same data type is that for any, any array variable actually store data item of it, the data type for which it is declared. So for example, we can have an array of GPA, which can store different uh, GPA of student. We can have an array of Boolean that can only store Boolean values. We can have array of integer that can only store integer value, but we can have an array of, let's say, a variable data that store a string, a, a float, uh, integer value, and a Boolean value. This is actually wrong, although it's it's <coughs> it's possible in some uh, languages, but as far as the language of implementation for this course is concerned, this is this is uh, a syntax error. This is syntactically not correct. So we can have a vi a, a data in an array of is fresh that can store a boolean and a string or a value of age that can store age in, in form of a uh, digital number and also age in form of uh, uh, a written in form of a written uh, string format so what are array attributes so every given array has uh, three attributes which are the name of that array variable the type that is the type of information that can be stored in that array and also the size of that array so for example this student name the name of this array is simply what student name and um, the type of this array is string because the array is actually storing strings of name right and the size of the array is simply the number of element in this array if we are to count this is one two three four and five so the size of this array is five so the same thing for this array the name is what a gpa the type is float because it is storing uh, a float uh, data we can call it a float or double and then the size if you have to count number of element is still five the same thing for is fresh and age so how do we declare or define array in java programming language there are basically two ways of doing that the first is to declare an array variable and populate the elements for that array at the point of declaration and the second format is to declare an array variable by specifying the size of that array and at a later point in time in our program we will populate the elements of that array using the array index so here is the syntax firstly we declare the data type of the array variable which we want to uh, declare then followed by a square bracket. This square bracket indicates that, okay, the variable we are about to declare is an array variable. So, and then with an assignment statement, we can simply uh, 
After our assignment statement, we open a curly bracket and specify the element of that array. And for the other format, after an assignment statement, we use the new keyword of uh, and then uh, the data type, and then within a square bracket, we specify the size of that array. So, and at a later point, we can use array index to specify or uh, also to populate element into uh, that array. So, which brings me to what array index is. Array index is simply a numbering, it's the numbering of elements in our array variable. So, you know stored collection of data elements so there should be a way for us to keep track of this data element each of these data element in order for us to be to be able to easily assess that element so the way it is does in array is that every data element is assigned an index number and this index number begin from 0 to the size of that array minus 1 so looking at the first example where we declare an array of student name with uh, following name Muhammad, Khadija, Umar, Fatima, and Aliu. So here is a representation of how the uh, how index are being assigned to each of these elements within the array. So the first element, which is Muhammad, will be assigned index 0, Khadija index 1, Umar index 2, and so on and so forth like that. So whenever I want to assess any of this element, we simply make use of the index number of that element together with the array variable to as assess that element or data. So for the second way of specifying an array, after declaring the array and specifying the size of that array, the same way whenever I want to populate element into that array, we make use of the array index and then uh, followed by an assignment statement and the data that we want to populate into that array. So for example, let's say I want to populate Mohammed since Mohammed is my first element. So uh, after writing my uh, student name variable, uh, which is the array variable, so within square bracket, I'll specify that, okay, at index zero, this is there simply, mean, okay, student name at index zero, assign Mohammed to it. So student name at index one assign Khadija to it and so on like that so here is our first class activity so uh the first question is uh the, uh, the first activity is we have a data uh, we have a array variable of data with element uh one two we have some integer element right uh, so and we have a question here that says what is the size of this the above array so you can try and pause this video and give it a try uh, to see if you can actually answer each of these questions correctly the second question is what is the output of system dot out dot print lean data of index 3 and then the third question is what is the output of system dot out dot print lean data of 3 plus data of index 0. And lastly, using the two method of defining an array in Java, define an array that stored the mid-afternoon temperature of your environment for the last five days. So you can pause this video and give it a try. So here are the answers to the class activity. So the size of this array will simply count the number of elements in this array, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that's why we have 8 as the answer. So system.out.println data of 3. So we simply want to access the element in the data at index 3. Start counting from the first element with 0, right? This is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So making 21 the element at index 3. So, and the third question is, what is the output of data at index 3 plus data at index 0? We know our data at index 3 to be 21, right? So what is the element at data at index 0, which is 22? So summing up 21 and 22 will give us 43, right? So, and the last question, which is uh, using the two method of defining an array in Java. We are asked to define an array that stores the mid-afternoon temperature 
of our environment for the last five days. So it is the, I think <clears throat> this is uh, the mid afternoon temperature of my environment for the last five days. So as far as my calculation is concerned, so here I have int uh, temperature, which is equals 33, uh, 34, 35, 30, and 32. So this is my definition using the first way of defining an array. We declare a variable, we specify this curly bracket, and then the variable, and then the variable indicating that, okay, this is an array, and then we specify the element. The second one, declare the data type, then the curly bracket, followed by the variable name, and then we specify the keyword new int and uh, specify the size of that array. So, and then after we can populate the element by saying temperature as index zero equals to this, index one, index four, and so on, and so forth. So you can see me uh, like changing between uh, the position of this square bracket. This actually worked, but I think this is uh, <clears throat> the most appropriate format of writing it. So I'll try to stick to one format, which is writing the uh, square bracket after the data type. So the next section is looping through an array. So how can we loop through the element within our array? Uh, to begin with, what is loop? We, uh, I think we, uh, we covered uh, the concept of loop, right? Well, no, loop is simply a method of repeating a process for a number of time, for a fixed amount of time, right? So, and uh, one of the loop construct that we know of is uh, the for loop, we have other uh, loop construct, right? So, for example, to repeatedly output a number in an increasing order from 1 to 10, let's say 1 to output number from uh, 1 to 10. So, if we want to do that with a for loop uh, using the concept of loop, so this the following line of code we actually do we we'll use the for keyword and he, within here we specialize or we initialize a counter in, in our case here i is the counter variable and then a condition which is that is we, want, we don't want our i to exceed our uh, 10 and then our counter update which is i plus uh, plus is a way of incrementing our counter so, and after this statement, within this colleague bracket, we specify an output statement or a print line statement saying i. So, we know what this does, right? In the first instance, it prints the value of i and then increment i by 1 and then print it, print the next value, which is 2, increment by 1, print the next value, which is 3. It keeps on doing it doing it so far this condition is satisfied and whenever i is no longer less than or equals 10 so nothing will be print right so now given uh the student name array which we have already seen in previous slide string uh student name that we have this value Mohammed, khadija omar fatima and so on so let's we want to look through this array to output the uh, element within that array, how we're going to go about that. So, you know, we can also use uh, the same logic for outputting number from 1 to 10. Using the for keyword, we initialize our counter to start from 0, since our index in array start from 0, right? And then our condition is that i shouldn't be uh, greater than 5, because the size of our array is 5 and the index stop at 4, right? And then we increment it by 1. So to output element, we simply use the print statement, the array, vari array variable, and uh, we reference to the index. So starting with i, which is 0, and it will continu continuously incrementing it to 1, 2, till it outputs all the elements in that array so our output will look in this form so and then we can also do the same thing we can also achieve the same thing by using uh, a method called length so rather than just uh, counting the value of this the sorry the size counting the element within this array and uh, then specifying 
the value uh, sorry the value here so in a case whereby we don't actually know the actual size of an array or maybe the size is the, the size is too lengthy for us to count we can simply make use of a method called length so this method simply return the size of that array for us so so by saying i is less than or equals to student name dot length this student name signify the size of this array and then the same logic applied for incrementing and the same thing work whichever one it gives the same output so now <coughs> let's uh let's give our second class activity a try uh, the first activity is that you have a company that manufacture and distribute five different items so using the java.util.scanner package, we are asked to write a program that allow a user to store the quantity of the five different items manufactured today in an array. So, and secondly, store the quantity of five different items distributed today within an array. So our tax, the first tax is very simple. We simply create an array. We specify, we specify, okay, maybe we have an array, and then we simply specify number of quantity of item manufacture for each of these five items within that array, and then the same thing for item distributed. We do it that same way. <coughs> so to do this, we can go to our environment so we are asked to use a uh, java.ut.scanner so using this scanner method we allow user to actually give us the value of this element right the value of the element within our array rather than we specifying it at the point of declaration so we we'll use the second method of defining an array so the first tax is what item that we are manufactured right so in order for us to do that we can simply we can simply specify the first array which is integer right since uh, it is a quantity so item manufacture we can just say we can have a variable manufactured item so we make use of our square bracket manufactured item equals to what we have new new int and we specify the size so uh, which is five right so uh the same thing for item distributed we have int or curly bracket dist distributed item which is equals to new int five right so now we have our two variables the next thing is to write the instruction that accepts uh, the quantity of this item manufacturer and the quantity of this item distributed. So we can make use of scanner here. I already have a line that declare my scanner, which is scanner input equals to new scanner system dot in. So I can write an instruction that tells my user to input right by saying system dot out dot print line Enter the quantity 
enter the number of quantity of item one so here i can just say manufactured right so on whatever is given to me i can simply save it into manufactured item of index zero equals to what input dot next int right so whatever is given we store it into the first index of manufactured item so we can just repeat this process for second item third item fourth item and a fifth item three four and five so here we have two three and four so we apply uh, the same uh, mechanism for distributed item too so i can simply copy all this and then put it here so rather than manufactured here i will change it to distributed so i can just copy this copy paste So we simply change this variable towards distributed by distributed what item. Copy this, paste. So, and that's it. So, you want to run this program right away. Okay. So, enter a quantity of manufactured, quantity, enter a number of quantity of item one, maybe that's three, uh, four, five, three, twenty-two. So we are done with our manufacture and then distributed 12, 21, 32, 23, 12. So I believe that is what is asked of all from the activity, right? So and then second activity is we are asked to rewrite the above program by looping around the process of storing the quantities manufactured and distributed so rather than having an instruction of instruction for each of the item that is manufactured and distributed to be entered by a user we can uh, simply uh, loop around that that instruction so rather than writing it for five times we can just have one instruction however it is looped so to do that uh, we'll go back to our eclipse so from here we can introduce our first statement, right? Our for loop by saying forward int i equals zero, i is less than five, right? And i plus plus. So within this curly bracket, we simply need just one of these. So so instead of this a manufactured entire quantity of item one you can simply concatenate i to this 
by saying i plus 1, right? Since i for the first time is 0, 0 plus 1, making 1, right? So, then we have a statement that accepts that, right? So, rather than specifying 0 here, we specify i, right? And then, I think we are done for this. So, we can also do the same thing for distributed. So we simply copy this and then paste it here and then we had it here high plus one right so and then we'll move this one so copy distributed paste it here instead of zero we simply have i so and then we can eliminate all of this so if you are to run this program we have we still have the same okay there's kind of an error here so let me let me see. let me concatenate let me say one plus i So let it be one plus i. Okay, let it. Let me put it within a bracket. Bracket. Okay, now it's, it's item one, not item zero, one, or one, zero. So the same way I simply specify the quantity for manufacturer distributed. So for the second one, manufacturer was 32, we distributed 12, for manufacturer 34, we distributed 12, and so on and so forth, like that. So, and the third activity is still. Now we have to write a program still using this scanner package. Uh, write a program that allow a user to store the mid-afternoon temperature of their environment for the last five days in an array. So you can simply pause this video and follow the same format for the first activity to do that. So it's simply, it's, I think it's something that is very simple to do. And then we are also asked to rewrite the above program by looping around the process of storing the mid-afternoon temperature of your environment. So it's simply the same process, however, with a different question. So this is just for you to get your hand around array and uh, indexing and all of that. So, and here is an exercise for you. So, using the example in uh, this previous activity, which is uh, class activity two, uh, not uh, three, I actually moved to the first one. So, your company, your company which manufactured these five different items and also uh, distribute these five different items. So, they decide to analyze the key performance indicator for each items with uh, this formula quantity of item manufactured divided by quantity of item distributed so that is the formula to know for the key performance indicator for each of these so mind you each of these can have an excellent performance or a pop performance so so whenever the key performance indicator, after using this formula to calculate it, if it amounts to anything 0 0.8 or greater than that, 0 0.8 to 1, so then you should have a remark of excellent. Otherwise, you should have a remark of poor, that is a poor performance on that quantity or on that item. So we have to write a Java program that analyze and print out the KPI remark for each item produced in your company. So your program will simply allow the user to accept 
the quantity manufactured for each of these items and the quantity distributed. Then thereafter, the program calculates the KPI for each of these quantities. So you reference to the index of each of these elements within the array, right? So and to calculate this and then, then you tell whether the performance of that item is excellent or poor. So, and the second exercise, using the example in class activity three, write a program that tells if the average mid temperature of the last five days in your environment is mostly hot or mostly cold or mostly mid milk using the following formula. So, the same way a user simply uh, type in the temperature of uh, its environment, that is the mid -ter the temperature for, of his environment uh, at uh, a particular moment, which is the mid afternoon, right? For the last five days. So, and uh, thereafter, you simply ca calculate, uh, you try to find the average of that uh, temperature for the last five days. So, and the formula to do that is sum of the temperature in the last five days divided by five, which is since it is five days, right? So if your average actually amounts to anything greater than or equals to 30, then you should have a remark of mostly hot. So that means for the last five days, the temperature is hot. However, if the average amounts to a range in between 20 to uh, 30, then it should be mostly milled. And if it amounts to anything less than 20, then the temperature for the last five days is mostly cold. And then the third activity exercise is given the following array scores. Array of score, which is one, 12, and so on and so forth like that. So the first task is you are asked to write a program to find the largest element in the array. The second is to find the smallest element in that in this array. And then lastly, you are also asked to write a program that finds the element that appeared twice in the array. So thank you very much. And that's all for lecture one.